So I want to tell you guys a story. Okay? Now I'm painted like a drag queen because I did a cute little photo shoot. Hey girl. <laughs> so um, I wanted to tell you guys a story. And I've been wanting to tell you guys this story. But I haven't thought about, you know, I wanted to think about a cute little witty way to deliver it. But in my process of thinking about delivery, you know. I just have been procrastinating talking about it. So, anyway, I don't really know what the point of this story is. It's like, it's many things that involved in, that I learned from this situation. <laughs> it's many things that I learned from this situation. This situation is one of the reasons which switched me from regularly tricking guys to not tricking them now most people will say oh tricking guys now when i say tricking i mean like messing around with them without or dating them without telling them what i am a lot of people would think that it's because of the danger like oh that's so dangerous you can get killed and no that's not that's the least of my worries um but that's a whole nother video um but this is one of the reasons why, um, you know, I stopped tricking. So let me tell y'all the story. This was Thanksgiving. This was Thanksgiving 2008. Yeah, 2008. Because it's Thanksgiving, every club is super, super packed. Um, you know, so we, that's what we're dealing with. But we're having so much fun just rocking, just 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 having so much fun that we're really not tripping. We're bouncing from club to club, going to clubs downtown, going to clubs over here, going to clubs over there. We're just having so, so, so much fun. We go to this one club, and we are driving through the parking lot. And I am in the passenger seat. Um, and we're driving through, just scoping the scene to see if the club is going to be old people. Is it going to be hot? Is, you know, the perspective. What's the... What's just scoping out the place? What is it looking like on the outside of the club? And so we're driving through the parking lot, and I look over to my right out of the passenger side window, and I just see this beautiful, chocolate, thick boy with the most stunning smile that I have ever seen in my life to this day. <laughs> um beautiful smile just like oh my god and I looked at him and he looked at me and he started smiling and I started smiling and because we were in the car it's not like you about to stop and say hey or he's gonna stop me and say hey um we kept rolling but all of a sudden when we turned the corner just exactly what I just said that you're not going to do. He did. He ran up to the car and said, hey, 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 stop, 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 stop. So they, my friend stopped the car and he came up to the car and was like, you are so beautiful to me. And I said, well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> and... He said that I had a beautiful smile. And I told him, you have a beautiful smile, too. I was just thinking that when we rolled past you. You have a beautiful smile, too. And he's like, oh, that's what's up. Da -da -da -da. Pause. Now, prior to us passing them, when I looked at his smile, I also looked at the boy he was with. They were sitting outside of the boy he was with truck. Now, the guy that he was with, when I look at him, he immediately gives me a look of, oh, my God. Now, this guy that gave the oh, my God look is a guy that I had messed around with before. <laughs> Years before. But a guy that knew me specifically. But we never had seen each other in a public setting. And usually when you meet a guy that knows what you are, that you've messed around with in a public setting, 
sometimes they can get nervous. Like they can get to the point where they think you're going to tell everybody. Oh, I mess with him. Da, 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 da. Kind of childish and stupid. But, you know, they get paranoid and they get to ducking and dodging and hiding shit. Because they think like you're going to spill their tea. <laughs> um, but, first of all, I'm not that type of girl. Anyway, because I'm a grown woman. You got me fucked up. <laughs> but... Number two, I just saw one of the most beautiful men I have ever seen in my life. And you were just a regular ass piece of trade that I had. I was not thinking about you at all. I was thinking about the guy who just gave me this Colgate. I go to the dentist every day. Smile. <laughs> That's who I was thinking about when thinking about you. Anyway, so while the guy was talking to me, it deems in my head that this must be his friend. They must know each other. So... If I'm talking to him, I know old boy is probably going to tell him my tea. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not for sure. But you are so beautiful to me that I'm willing to risk it. Here, take my number. He asked me for my number, of course. And I gave him my number. And, hey, it starts. Now, the rest of that night with the girls and going to straight clubs, it was so much story and funny, hilarious stuff with us. But that's a whole nother video. <laughs> um, so me, this guy's name, the guy with a beautiful smile, his name is Lawrence. The night went wonderful and I go home. He does what he says he's going to do. He texts me and we say goodnight to each other and, you know, kind of chat, text back and forth and blah, 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 blah. So the next day comes and... He says, well, I know, it's, I know they say, he's, um, he texts me in the text message. He said, I know that people have the like three day rule. Like if you get somebody's number, you wait three days to call them or wait this long to call them. And he was like, I don't know, but I feel like I'm going to go out on a limb and, you know, I want to take you out, but I'm not going to take you out at night and, you know, try to, I want to take you out. You know, in on a daytime, you know, date. A daytime date. And I say, okay, well, cute. Well, where do you want to go? He said, well, there's a sports bar in between both of us because you live such and such place and I live here. There's a sports bar in between both of us. We can go just chill, talk, and have drinks. And, you know, watch the game. Now, I'm not really into sports, but throughout my life, I have dated sports fanatic. Everybody I have dated are sports guys. So, um, my high school guy friend was the captain of the football team. So, you know, I know sports is something you got to deal with when dealing with men. <laughs> he comes, picks me up, and we go to the sports bar. Now, because this is daytime, it's not like it's super packed, but there's people in there. We go to the bar. He opens, um, you know, this is stereotypical things, but it's really, these are small things that, a woman really pay attention to when she's on a date with a guy. Do you open the car door? Do you open the doors when we're going in and out of a restaurant or out of a location? Um, do you pull the chair out? Um, small little things like that are normal, but some guys have not been, I don't want to say trained, but brought up in a way to teach them how to interact with a woman on a date. So when a guy does that, you know, you pay attention. A guy, a, a woman pays attention to it. So he will, he opened the door, pulled the chair up, and, you know, he's just doing all of these gentleman things that I really, 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 really like. So um, I'm sitting at the bar. He is sitting at the bar. There's a guy on this end of the bar. Two guys on this end of the bar. There's, like, a white couple, like, on this end of the bar. And then it's like, I want to say it's about a total of 13 people around the bar. And that's the only people in there besides the um, bartender. So about 14. Um, everybody is talking to each other. It's not like certain people are talking, but because the, uh, so it's not like certain people are in groups and they're only dealing with each other. Everybody is talking to each other. So they commenced to talk about the game. Now, I am totally disinterested but this has turned out, I think this man is beautiful. I don't care if I was sitting here watching paint dry. Because I'm not looking at paint dry. I'm looking at him. <laughs> so.
So he's just totally, totally, totally just eye candy and articulate and just him interacting with the other guys, just his confidence and his just his demeanor and swagger. If you ever dated a guy that you just did this type of guy, you know it. It's it's a it's a guy that um you know that just has some substance. <laughs> it's just, you know, they look good, they're confident, they're articulate, they can talk, they can um just everything about their swag is just on point. So, some I I feel sorry for any woman that has not had a guy like this or interacted with one. So he is, when he's talking to them and interacting with them, he takes the time to stop what he's doing, like periodically, and say, you know, you all right. I know you told me you're not into sports, but I don't want to seem like I'm neglecting you. Well, thank you. I'm fine. I'm sitting here sucking down my drinks. I'm good, girl, honey. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm feeling love. So, everything is good. Every the whole we're laughing. He's um when the game is off, we still are sitting there and we talk and we have great conversation about other stuff, stuff that I like to talk about. Um, you know, we just have a great, 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 great first date. It was going so, 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 so well that that was like at twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. It lasted so long that by the time we leave the sports bar, it was dark. So from 12 in the afternoon till dark, that's how much fun we were having. And when we leave, we're driving and he takes me to his mother's house. Now, it's different when you're sitting with a guy. He don't know where you are, what you are. You, he doesn't know that you're transsexual. And you guys are talking and interacting. And, you know, you're putting your A game. You're, you're putting your best fish forward. <laughs> and um, you put your A game on. It's different when it's just that person that you got to deal with. But when you have to go to somebody's house and deal with mama, sister, whoever else at the house, Da, 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 da. That kind of gets a transgender woman. Well, me, I don't know about other girls. I don't want to speak for them, but me, it gets me nervous. Where I'm like, ooh, I gotta be on my P's and Q's. The voice gotta be up here. <laughs> Everything's gotta be right. Everything's gotta be right. So, um, plus this is me, Mama. So on top of you, you don't want to be clocked. You're trying to, you're trying to put on a good impression for Mama. Now, I told him, I said, ooh, your mother is in here? And he was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, does everybody meet your mama? He was like, it's my mom. You know, I don't really, it's not that deep for me. You know, he's basically saying, meeting my mama is not that serious. Getting cool with my mama is that serious. But, <laughs> um, you know, meeting my mama is not that big for me. You know, it's not like I hide my mama from people until I... I like them real well. It's I don't I don't do that. And I was like, oh, okay. He was like, you know, I'm over here. I want to stop by and see my mama. You with me? Bam. If you was my friend, you know, you are my friend. But you know, if you was my friend, I would just do that. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, oh. <laughs> so we go in, and I talk to his mom, and his mom is like the countryest, nicest, sweetest mom. That like, oh my god, you're sweet, and she loves. Medea. <laughs> she absolutely loves Medea. So she was sitting there saying, well, have you seen the Medea movies? And the, now these are the plays. Now I, I, now I have supported Tyler Perry in the movies, but I don't, um, you know, I never watched the plays. The plays was too boring and, um, I didn't like all that. <laughs> so, um, she said, well, which ones haven't you, which one? But I told her, yeah, I've seen them. <laughs> Because I didn't want to see it. She said, well, this is a new one. I know you ain't seen this one. And so she pops it in and she forces me to watch Medea. You know. <laughs> but I'm acting like I'm entertained. Oh, he's silly. Da -da -da -da. So the sister come in with her little boy. The little boy is really nice and playful. And everything goes perfectly fine. This whole day has went great. The mom likes me. The sister likes me. He likes me. 
So it's time. It's getting late. It's about 10 something, you know, 10, 11 o'clock. So it's getting late. So it's time for me to go back home or whatever. So um, I, in the process of us going home, his car is a stick, a stick shift. Um, it's manual, so it's not automatic. Um, and I can't remember how we start talking about cars, but I told him that I don't know how to drive a stick shift. He was like, what? He was like, oh, it's easy. Turned off the road. Went to some, uh, like, little, I don't know, subsidized housing place where it was just like an empty street or whatever, just houses, but not a busy street. And taught me how to drive a stick. <laughs> so we're sitting in the middle of the street. This is after the day, after the mom, every we sit in the middle of the street and he says, he jumps out the car and said, come on, get in the driver's seat. I'm going to show you how to drive a stick. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, okay. So I get in the driver's seat and he's talking me through driving a stick. I'm just like Bruh. making all these noises. And it's just the whole experience is really exciting and fun because I never drove a stick and I'm learning how to drive it. And he's laughing at me when I fuck up, when I don't change gears the right way. <laughs> he was like, you know, I'm going to have to get a new car because you're fucking up my car. You know, making jokes. And it's just really fun. Like, this is like a really fun day. Long as date where I'm he's doing so spontaneous stuff that I didn't expect, you know, all this kind of stuff. So we stayed out there trying to teach me how to drive a stick <laughs> for like an hour, an hour and a half or something. So that was fun. And we finally get me to my house. I drive all the way to my house with a stick. And finally at my house, <laughs> we in the car and we're talking. And he was like, well, you know, this is like one of the best dates that I've ever been on in a long, 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 long time. And, you know, I really appreciate it. And I was like, well, you know, I agree. The feeling is mutual. And I love this. <laughs> I really, 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 really love this. So I was like, this is, this was like great. So I get out the car and he leaves. This be this begins a month long dating experience. Like just us just really having fun. I made him I made up in my mind that I was really going to get to know him and not tell I didn't wasn't going to tell him my tea, but I was going to get to know him and then tell him my tea, let him see who I am and you know my personality and all this kind of stuff. So, in that whole month, it just was like a wonderful, just wonderful dating experience. Just we would talk all night on the phone, text each other throughout the day, hang out, go to the movies, go out to eat, um, go bowling, go whatever. We were just doing so many things and I started to really, really like him. Like, for real. Like, oh my God, I really... Love you. <laughs> Not love, but, you know, just really like, God, this is a great guy, finally. But in my mind, the elephant in my mind is like, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here, boo-boo, and you need to let him know. Da -da -da -da. So I'm like, oh, girl, come on, oh, I fucking shit up. You always fucking shit up. You're coming in at the wrong time. I don't need to tell my tea right now. Let me just enjoy myself and, you know, it's gone. So, that's what I'm feeling. So, now, after a month, him being a man, he's a gentleman, but he's still a man. <laughs> I want you to understand that. He's a gentleman, but he's still a man. So, a man is going to try to get some. At the end of the day, he can be the nicest gentleman, da 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 A man is going to try to get some. <laughs> Respectfully, but trying to get some. So, we having our little blockbuster night. And I, my, none of my roommates is home. It's just me and him. And he's at my house. And we are watching movies and... 
you know what happens when you have blockbuster night. Stuff we stuff gets to touching and kissing and you know all that kind of stuff. Boners start to happen. And, you know, it just escalates to, you know, them trying to do something. So, right at that moment, I say, now, I have a choice. I can mess around with them, give them some head. I haven't seen his piece yet. I felt it, but I haven't seen it. It's the difference in feeling it and seeing it. I want to see his piece. <laughs> but I can be the good girl and tell him my tea and see how he reacts to it. Or I can have him, mess around with him. You know, without telling him, da 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 I decide <laughs> on the latter. <laughs> I decide to, you know, mess around with him. And that's what I did. I take him to the back room and to my boudoir. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I tell him that, you know, I'm not really trying to fuck, but I know you a man and you got knees. I give, you know, this whole bullshit story. I know you got knees and I ain't really trying to fuck, but I'm going to do this for you. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff. I'm going to do this for you. And, you know, just to get you through the time period of until we do go all the way. And blah, 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 blah. Game, 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 game. And he just go ahead and him being a man, he's just going to run with it. Oh, okay, great. I'm about to get some head. Great. <laughs> so, you know, I give him the business, of course. <laughs> Peace was everything I wanted, everything it needed to be, everything right. So, you know, we talked after and he was like, whoa, <laughs> mind blowing. Everything is what I needed to be. <laughs> everything is what I needed to be. So I said, oh, I'm in there. You gotcha? <laughs> so... We get to, um, it continues. Everything's going good. We talking, you know, we texting, sexting, um, everything. We do still doing the day thing. Like about two weeks later, I'm like, man, look, I need to tell him my tea because it can't keep going on like this because now I'm really liking him. Now I'm really liking him and, you know, I feel like I'm in there, but I'm not in there because he doesn't know my tea. So, I send him a text and I say, I got something to talk, I want to talk to you about, but I don't know if I want to talk to you about it in person because it's a really serious subject and blah, 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 you know, but I don't know how it's going to make you feel about me. And he was like, oh, well, you can tell me whatever, you know, whatever you tell me, you know. Let me, I, you know, I'm, you my girl, da, 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 you my home girl, you know, it don't matter, what's up, tell me, I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, the palm's getting sweaty, <laughs> well, I'm texting, because it's not in his face, <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh. well, you know, I don't, I don't feel like, you know, I'm a special kind of girl. <laughs> this is I'm I'm just beating around the bush with all kinds of euphemisms for tranny <laughs> in the text message. And when you get to doing that in this day and age, because there's so many girls out here that they may have got came in contact with, they get to be like, hmm. So what are you saying? <laughs> So basically, you know, I tell him my tea, and he says, wow. <laughs> and for like three hours, he does, that's all he says. He says, wow. And I text back. When he says, wow, I text back. Wow, is that all you got to say? And he doesn't respond to me in three hours. 
So I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, what? Is he on his way over? <laughs> Is, you know, let me get the rifle loaded so I can, you know, whatever's about to go down, let me, you know, prepare for it or whatever. So about three or four hours, I think it was like four hours, four, three or four hours later, he calls, and now he doesn't call. No, no, he calls. He doesn't text. He calls, and he was like, what's up? And I was like, hey, what's up? And he was like, I wish that you would have told me what you told me before. And I was like, before I could continue, when I was to respond to it, because I always have a, because I've been in this situation before, I have a, like a catalog of responses for it. It just seems like it just automatically comes. But before I could get my catalog of responses out and respond, <laughs> um, you know, I'll say something like, you know, but I'm scared. I was scared or, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to ruin the situation. It was so good or whatever. Before I could get the response out, he was like, no, let me finish talking. He was like, he was like, it's not about you being what you are. He was like, yeah, you know, just keeping it real. If you would have told me in the beginning, I probably wouldn't have talked to you. I probably would have said, oh, no, that's not my thing and move the fuck on. He was like, but what makes it worse for me is that you gave me a chance to get to know you and I like you. But this is not my thing. This is not me. I'm not into tr transsexuals, whatever you, your, your type is called. <laughs> I'm not into transsexuals. But now, I'm in a situation where I like you a lot, but you are not what I want. Ding. Aha. A aha moment for me. Not that it taught me something, but because I wanted to be spared. I wanted to be spared of that feeling. The feeling of if I was a girl. Not that I hadn't had it before, but this is different. This situation is different. If I, You always have the, oh, if I was a regular girl, this would happen, or this could be, or this, da, 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 da. But because love is so important to me, and this is one of the only guys in my life that played his card so perfectly right that I know that if I was a regular girl, a regular girl, this probably would be my husband. He played his card so perfectly right in every way that a man can play his cards in the courting experience, perfect. So, it's one of them situations where I would have spared myself the feeling of, oh my God, I, I should have told you my tea because then you would have told me I'm not down with that and I wouldn't be in this situation where I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you and you have to tell me no. And the same exact feeling that I have right now, he is telling me that he has. <laughs> He's telling me that I am feeling you. You know, I haven't had a great situation with a woman like this in so long. In just, I can't even remember it. And now you tell me that Basically, you know, you're a man. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not a man. And he was like, well, you're not what I want. Any dream, he says, he says, any dream that I had of my, my dream of what I picture my life to be, you just put something in it that, I, that will change it. 
you know, if I wanted you to be my wife and start a family with you, I can't do that. But I like you. <laughs> I like you. I Right now, while we're talking, I like you. I like who you are. I like everything about you. But you can't be what I want you to be. And I'm sitting on that phone listening to all this like, oh, my God, I don't want to be here. I want to hang up. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to. I don't want to be here. <laughs> and I shouldn't be here. And I don't want to be here again. So that's what happened. That's what happened, and I said I will never be in a situation where a guy, if a guy, I start liking him, or I start, now I'm not going to tell him right up front, but way quicker than I used to. I'm not going to date you. I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm not going to waste my time getting to know you, because then when I like you and you like me, I have to deal with this. Whereas if I told you in the beginning, I have no emotional attachment to you. And I can just say, all right, you're not down, holla. But because it was Lawrence, the man of my dreams, <laughs> because it was him, you know, I just ruined it. I had to get rejected. So, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot and changed my mindset about things. And the fact that he was so nice about rejecting me. <laughs> he was so real and understandable. It wasn't just like, oh, fuck this. This is... It wasn't crazy. It wasn't anything. Not that it's crazy, but it wasn't any kind of... It didn't switch to... Oh, well, you, well, can you suck my dick again? <laughs> it is switched to freak mode because a lot of times guys are switched to freak mode where now you no longer, you can't be my wife. So you just be my freak side thing. He didn't even turn it to that. He immediately said, well, you know, I won't be texting you no more and I won't be calling you, you know, but I'll think about you until I, you know, find what I want. <laughs> devastating anyway it was my lesson learned and I know this is a long ass video Woo. Um, tell me what you think this is your girl Diamond and that's my story and I'm sticking to it <laughs> bye bye